सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 22nd of December. India's Omicron tally rises to 213 most cases in capital Delhi, Western Maharashtra state. Locals protest over absence of doctors, healthcare facilities in Pakistan administered Kashmir. and Afghanistan's young Taliban fighters face the challenge of peace and now for all the details India has recorded 213 cases of the omicron variant of corona virus across 15 states and union territories so far out of which 90 people have recovered or migrated according to health ministry data on wednesday Out of this capital New Delhi topped the list with 57 confirmed cases followed by Western Maharashtra state with 54 cases. The number of Omicron variant of coronavirus cases in India has risen to 213. Health Ministry data showed on Wednesday. Indian capital New Delhi and Western Maharashtra state continue to contribute the highest number of new Omicron cases to the country's total case load. Omicron cases in New Delhi have increased to 57 while with 11 new infections of the Omicron variant Maharashtra's tally has increased to 54 followed by Southern Telangana with 24 cases warning that the Omicron variant of COVID-19 is at least 3 times more transmissible than the Delta variant the center on Tuesday directed states to impose strict restrictions in districts reporting high positivity rate including imposition of night curfew strict regulation of large gatherings and containment measures the states have also been asked to ensure 100% vaccination coverage earlier health minister mansukh mandavia told parliament that a study on the effectiveness of the vaccines against omicron was underway and that a decision on the booster dose would be taken once the experts gave their suggestions On being asked about the severity of emerging covid variant Dr VK Paul member health Neeti Aayog on Wednesday said any change in the pattern of the presentation of the emerging cases are being watched very carefully we have said and as the honorable health minister sahab has said in the parliament the need and the timing and the nature of posting if any will be based on scientific decisions scientific thinking and that is what the government is engaged Meanwhile India recorded 6317 new cases of COVID-19 and 318 deaths in the last 24 hours taking the country's active case load to 78190 the lowest in 575 days Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will hold COVID-19 review meeting on Thursday in wake of Omicron spread India's Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu on Wednesday lamented that the performance of the Rajya Sabha the upper house of the parliament was below expectations as he announced the adjournment of parliament since a die on Wednesday a day ahead of the original schedule the winter session of the parliament witnessed several disruptions and protests due to suspension of 12 opposition lawmakers for their unruly conduct in the previous monsoon session in August Both the houses of the Indian Parliament were adjourned signed die on Wednesday a day ahead of the original schedule. In his brief valedictory remarks, Vice President of India M Venkaiah Naidu, who is the Rajya Sabha chairman, said that the performance of the upper house in the winter session was below expectations. The upper house witnessed several disruptions and protests during the session following the suspension of 12 opposition party members for their unruly conduct in the previous session in August. which the opposition termed absolutely wrong around 10 bills were passed in this winter session some of which include the election laws amendment bill the farm laws repeal bill and the dam safety bill i am not happy to share with you the house function much below its potential i urge all of you to collectively and individually reflect and introspect if this session could have been different and better 
Meanwhile, Om Birla, the Speaker of the Lower House Lok Sabha, said that the productivity was recorded at 82 percent, while more than 18 hours were lost due to protests. The winter session, which started on November 29, was scheduled to conclude on December 23. India's Foreign Secretary Harshwadan Shringla began his two-day visit to Myanmar on Wednesday. This is the first such high-level outreach from India since the military government took over in February this year after removing the civilian government led by Aung San Suu Kyi. The country witnessed massive protests following the coup. India's Foreign Ministry in a statement said Shringla will hold discussions with the State Administration Council, political parties and members of the civil society. The powerful State Administration Council is headed by General Min Ong Liang. The visit comes exactly two weeks after India said on December 7 that it is disturbed by the verdicts relating to Myanmar's ousted leader Suu Kyi and others. The Nobel Peace Laureate was sentenced to a four-year jail term by a Myanmar court which held her guilty of inciting dissent in the first of a series of verdicts. Her sentence was later reduced to two years in jail. Moving on, locals and traders in Pakistan administered Kashmir's Hatian Bala staged a protest recently over absence of doctors from their duties and lack of proper healthcare facilities in the illegally occupied region. The protesters blamed the situation has forced the residents to go to faraway places for treatment, while the government has continued to ignore their plight. Locals and traders in Hatiya Bala in Pakistan administered Kashmir held a protest recently over absence of doctors and lack of proper health care facilities in the illegally occupied region. The protesters highlighted doctors at the district hospital remain absent from their duties, forcing the residents to roam here and there for treatment. They blame the hospital has only become a referral center where there is no doctor nor facilities and despite several calls, the government has continued to ignore the plight of the locals. डॉक्टर्स जो हैं वो अपनी मनमानियां करते हैं मेरा ख्याल है इसके पीछे कोई माफिया है जो उनकी सपोर्ट करता है उनको यहां आदर नहीं मिलता हुकूमत का वक्त का फर्ज है कि वो इन डॉक्टर्स को आदर करे या इनको फारक कर दे और अस्पताल को बंद कर दे कि इससे बेहतर यही है कि इस हॉस्पिटल को एक रेफर सेंटर का दर्जा दे के अंदर उसके वेटिंग हॉल बना दे बाहर एक मुर्शी बिठा दे जो जो भी जाए उसको एक पर्ची दे दे आप इस्लामाबाद चले जाएं आप एक्टबाद जाएं या मुजफ्फराबाद जाएं इससे आगे इस हॉस्पिटल का कोई मसरफ है ही नहीं Locals say they have now become increasingly intolerant of the Pakistani occupation as Islamabad consistently maintains a negligent attitude towards the illegally occupied territory and ignores even their basic demands. Months after the Taliban fighters conquered Kabul, many still bask in the achievement of overcoming the United States and its allies after a struggle that ruled their lives for so long. The generation of young Taliban fighters now face an uncertain future as the country they won after two decades of war plunges ever deeper into economic crisis. The generation of young Taliban fighters that conquered Kabul has gone through the euphoria of victory to face an uncertain future as the country they won after two decades of war plunges ever deeper into economic crisis. Most have known only fighting and while their battlefield memories may be a source of pride, they must now adjust to a world that wants to forget about war. For the moment, four months after the fall of Kabul, many still bask in the achievement of overcoming the United States and its allies after a struggle that ruled their lives for so long. Uh, هغه چې موږ په دوب سره د غرمان سلټې دلې و د غرمان د موږ د افغانان او د موږ د مسلمانانو ارمان و چې هغه دغه هواده او دغه خاورې ته او دغه خلک ته سوکالي امن او ازادي وه فور مني ان کابل د سایټ اف د لونګ هیډ فایټرز اون د سټریټس کاست اونلی شاک اند فیو دت فیلینګ هاز ایسټ اس ان سرجنز ان دی راګ ټیک مکس اف لوز ټریډیشنل کلوډینګ اند کمبات جاکټس هاف بین ریپلیسډ بای یونیفورم سیکیورټی فورسز but fears of revenge against anyone associated with the former government remain 
and there are concerns over what will happen to women and to girls who are still largely excluded from the high school education. But as Kabul recovers from the trauma of August to face a mounting economic crisis, the challenge facing the Taliban was summed up by Kabul resident. As the Niyazi Amiyat, as Niyazi Ki Fasad Kamshida, as you Razi Asim. I'm as the Niyazi Ki Mardama Parayshanas, with the Sad Shama Isra, Zaifas, Dairu Zahaba, Mushkilati, the Supanjan Aram Meganat, Mamuruni Daulat, Moshnadar and Duma Simo Misha. و کسایی که کسب کار بودن و اون برای اونا کار نیستن اونا از این لیاز مشکلات دارن The international community is pressing the Taliban to make concessions on issues like broadening government beyond the ranks of veteran jihadis or guaranteeing women's rights That will test the cohesion of a movement which proved itself on the battlefield but which must now face the challenges of peace in 2015, Nepal suffered two high-magnitude earthquakes that killed thousands and damaged more than 800,000 houses. The reconstruction drive initiated by Indian government with UNDP's consultation in Gorkha and Nuwako district has brought smiles on the faces of the vulnerable people as houses are being provided to them. Nepal has been providing residence to the people of Gorkha and Nuwako districts who have been hit by the 2015 earthquake under the assistance of the Indian government. Dal Bahadur Vishwakarma, who lost his sight a decade ago, had to live in a temporary shelter for nearly half a decade after 2015 earthquake leveled his house to the ground. The situation now has changed. The local government, in assistance with the United Nations Development Programme, UNDP and the Government of India, has provided land and built a house for the family of Dal Bahadur. He is one of the first families who have shifted lately to relocated group of 13 households in Palungtar municipality of Gorkha. The Nepal Housing Reconstruction Project, NHRP, functional under the aid of the Indian government, has reached to earthquake victims who need assistance and help that is crucial to get the aid from the government as well as to construct their house. In 2015, Nepal suffered two high-magnitude earthquakes that left around 9,000 people dead and more than 22,000 injured. Indian government has committed to 150 million US dollars as post-earthquake assistance package on housing sector to provide financial and technical support for the reconstruction of 50,000 beneficiaries, including 100 million US dollars grant and 50 million US dollar under the fourth line of credit. As cold wave conditions grip parts of India, baby elephants at the Kaziranga National Park in northeastern Assam state are being covered with blankets to protect them from severe cold. Meanwhile, authorities at the northern Lucknow Zoo have installed heaters to help zoo inmates, especially the reptiles, to survive the dipping temperatures. As cold wave conditions grip parts of India amid the winter season, Baby elephants at the Kaziranga National Park in northeastern Assam state are being covered with blankets to protect them from severe cold. Officials at the Center for Wildlife Rehabilitation and Conservation in Kaziranga said that all measures are being taken to maintain the body temperature of the animals. They are also being fed proper food including milk to prevent any weakness. <laughs> Meanwhile, authorities of the Lucknow Zoo in northern Uttar Pradesh state have also taken precautionary measures including installation of heaters to help zoo inmates, especially the reptiles, to survive the dipping temperatures. 
तो जानवरों के लिए हीटर लगाना मैं समझता हूँ जू प्रशासन की एक बहुत अच्छी पहल है और इससे इन जानवरों के लिए राहत मिलेगी और इसके लिए मैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देता हूँ जू प्रशासन के Every year during the winter season zoo authorities make such arrangements to keep the animals cozy and comfortable and alterations in their diet are also made located in the tropics most of india witnesses a very hot summer and a largely temperate winter well that's all we have for you from south asia this evening now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on twitter at asianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time tomorrow good night subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button